So welcome back. Uh, last video I was showing you some of the things that I was able to get done um, both on the outside of the boat as well as inside New Step and some of the other work I did with the teak and things like that. Uh, anyway, had a few nice days this week so I was actually able to get paint on the boat. Uh, so I'll try to go through the whole process here as much as I can. Um, starting with uh, with the boat as it was before I started painting it. The boat itself was uh, still the original uh, factory red gel coat. Um, very heavily oxidized. I wasn't crazy about having a red boat anyway. Plus the gel coat was so oxidized that um, maybe I could have been able to bring it back. But uh, I just decided that I was going to paint it. So the first thing I had to do was uh, remove some decals off the outside of the boat. That had obviously been there. I don't know if they were original but they had been there for a long time. Uh, it was a name on the side of the boat and, and some graphics that looked very outdated. So I peeled those off initially with a, uh, a razor blade uh, carefully and then uh, removed all the glue residue with some uh, alcohol, some methyl hydrate, and we'll rubbed it all off. So um, after that, what I was left with was where the decals were, the gel coat, of course, was shiny, but it was actually slightly raised. Well, actually what it was was that the uh, oxidized gel coat all around the decals was actually had been oxidized away so that it it left um, a raised area of gel coat. So I actually had to sand the whole side of the boat to get it smooth so that I wouldn't be able to... So I wouldn't ex effectively end up with a 3D image of the... Uh, the old decal show, showing through my new paint. Um, so I did that with some fine sandpaper on my random orbital sander. Just carefully went over the whole thing and got it ready. Uh, next thing you have to do, well I wiped it all down with acetone but I also wiped it down with some uh, wax remover. Um, you can buy that at uh, body supply uh, and paint supply stores. Really good when you're painting a boat or a car or any surface that might have been waxed at some point in its life. No matter how much sanding you do or what you wipe it down with, it seems that sometimes some of that wax residue can stick around and then when you go to paint, it does some weird things to the paint. You end up with uh, fish eyes and kind of weird imperfections in the paint that just won't go away. And so it's a good idea to wipe it down with this wax remover. Um, and what I do as well is once I've done all of that, uh, once I've done all the masking and everything else, I still give it a quick wipe with some uh, whoops, some methyl hydrate to make sure that any oil from my fingers is not on the on the surface before I paint, because uh, that'll also repel the paint and make it look a little weird. Um, so yeah, so the gel coat initially got sanded. Uh, I masked out anything that I needed, didn't want to get painted. Uh, and then painted the whole thing and I showed you the painting process in an earlier video. Um, I was using the uh, Interlux Pre-Coat Primer uh, that I thinned with the uh, Interlux 333 brushing liquid. It basically thins the paint and it also slows down the dry time, the initial dry time a little bit so it gives you a little more time to work with it. Um, also a good idea to try to see if you can pick a day when it's not super hot. You want a nice clear day, but you don't want it to be too hot and sunny so that the paint dries too fast. Um, obviously the side that's in the shade is always easier to paint as well, so you can pick a time of day to do that if possible. That'll help you. Because uh, the faster the paint starts to dry, the harder it is to get it nice and smooth and bubble free and get all those glitches out of it. Anyway, um, as I showed in my earlier video, I used a high density little foam roller. Uh, I primed the whole boat. Um, and once the primer had set for a few days, I uh, gave the primer a light sanding. Uh, I used this 3M 320 grit paper. Um, I bought it at Walmart, but it's this purple stuff. I can see a shot of it here. I find that it works well in this kind of thing. It doesn't clog as easily as a lot of other sandpapers. It's a wet and dry paper, so however you want to do it. Um, so I lightly sanded the primer to get rid of any little imperfections in the primer. Also good to get sand out any dead flies and things like that, so you're starting with a smooth surface again. Uh, and then for the paint, um, I'm using the Interlux Bright Side Paint. Now, actually go back to the primer. The primer, when I buy the uh, pre-coat primer, I use both the gray and the white. 
Um, and I find that a lot of times the from sitting in the store, sitting on the shelf, the uh, pre-coat primer, um, a lot of the solids in it settle and it ends up with this layer of thick sludge in it that you need to stir. So you have to stir it and stir it and stir it. It seems like it's hopeless at first, but it will break up and you need to stir it as smoothly as you can into it because that's all the solids in the primer and you need those in the primer. You don't want to just use the liquid part, even though it is gray. Anyway, um, seems obvious, but you know, some people may not realize that. So you do need to stir it in really well. And then I run it through a paint strainer into another container to get any lumps out of it. Uh, and then I thin it out with the 333. I usually make sure that I thin enough of the paint uh, that I know that I'm going to be able to do the whole boat so that I don't have to stop when I go to refill the little paint tray that I don't have to stop to thin out some more paint that I have some pre-mixed. I usually mix it into some, you know, um, yogurt or whatever container that I find in the kitchen leftover one that I have a lid. So I mix it into that, I thin it out, and I have the lid to temporarily, temporarily throw on it while I'm doing the other painting out of the tray. It's the same thing with the uh, bright side paint I used on the uh, final two coats of the hull. Uh, I made sure that I... Uh, Strain, stirred it really well, mixed it really well, and then strained enough for that coat of paint. I used a little less than a quart per coat of paint, um, so I again st stirred it, strained it, thinned some out into a container with a lid for temporary storage, uh, and then filled the tray and started the painting. Um, again, uh, made sure I masked everything off beforehand, cleaned it really well, uh, after I did the light sanding with the 320 grit paper and then uh, proceeded to paint and uh, as you can see when I'm doing the painting um, what I end up doing is you doing a small area um, I was for in this boat it worked out to do a small, small area kind of in the top half and then the bottom half and then uh, you know, re-roll the top part, re-roll the bottom part, go back and forth. And each each time I do it, the first couple of times I roll o roll over the thing, I'm just kind of spreading the paint a little more evenly. Uh, the last few times I'm doing it, um, each successive time I roll over it, I'm doing it with a very light pressure on the roller. And each time I do it, it's just to break the bubbles. And uh, as it breaks the bubbles, each time it leaves slightly smaller bubbles until the last time when you're doing it, you'll feel it... it um, You'll notice when you do it very lightly, it just leaves some very tiny bubbles, and then when you look back, those bubbles are all gone, and you have a really nice gloss, and that's kind of when you leave it. Um, it's it's a lot of it's a really feel kind of a thing. Um, Got to make sure you don't put the paint on too heavy, or it doesn't work very well. Um, the paint is uh, quite watery when I'm doing this, so you got to make sure you have drop cloths to cover anything you don't want paint on, because it will drip pretty easily off the roller when you're putting it on. Uh, once it's on the boat, it doesn't because you're putting it on so thin. But off the roller itself, it can drip because it's pretty thin. Uh, thin as in watery. Um, anyway, I work my way around the boat like that, trying to make sure that you don't leave any ridges. you got to make sure that you keep the edge wet so you don't end up with uh, any roller marks. If you do have to stop painting, make sure you stop at a corner of the boat because otherwise if you stop in the middle of a flat surface, you're going to have a mark there that... You can't get rid of. Um, when I'm done the painting, I don't wait very long at all to remove the masking tape because uh, the problem with the paint is if it starts to skin over at all and then you pull the paint the tape off, uh, it can peel the paint around it. So it's always better to just make sure that you pull the tape off before the stuff starts to really harden up. Uh, obviously, you don't want it really runny, so it runs over whatever you're trying to protect. But as soon as it starts to get a bit tacky, uh, pull the tape off. Um, basically, that was what I did with it uh, for the painting part. Uh, once the one coat was done, um, I let it dry for a couple of days. Um, don't need to let it cut dry for a couple of days, but I did simply because I didn't have time to get back to it. Um, so, for example, the last coat um, I did this morning, and I went out this morning fairly early in the morning before. I knew it was going to be a warm day, but I wanted to get it done before it got really hot out because 
the cooler it is, um, the easier it is to get the paint on there nice and smoothly. And I knew which way the sun was going to shine from, so I started on that side before it got hot so I could work around to the other side. Um, between the coats, again, a very light sanding uh, just to remove any imperfections in the paint and smooth it out a bit and make sure the next, coat's, next coat kind of bites into the paint. Wipe it off to get any dust off. Um, I don't leave the masking tape on between coats because that's just going to cause more problems. So I put fresh masking tape on every time. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I needed to know. Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, anyway, it's it's a fairly easy way to paint. Um, you just need a good roller, a little bit of a brush for the edges to get into the edges sometimes. A good high density to roller, some paint strainers, rags for cleanup afterwards. Um, whatever paint you're using in the proper thinner, I, like I said, I use the Interlux uh, paints. Um, I think that just about covers it. So now the boat is blue. Uh, it's painted. The bottom of the hull is still red. Um, I'm going to put some black bottom paint on it eventually uh, to just above the regular water line. Uh, and the purple that you see at the top of the hull, uh, there's a purple stripe somebody has put on it on the white paint, on the white gel coat. That is actually going to get painted out and get turned back into white uh, above there. And hopefully down the road when I replace the canvas I'll uh, choose a different color that maybe goes better with the blue than the dark burgundy that it is right now. Um, but it doesn't leak, so it's it'll have to do for now. I think that that just about covers it for for the paint. So uh, until next time, uh, I I think this probably gets you up to speed. Uh, any questions? Please ask. Thanks.